Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. And welcome back to another edition of Issues in Education. Mondays during the Noon Report, we spotlight the issues that matter most to our public schooling families with the good Dr. Ralph Kerr at the Teaching and Learning Institute. Practicing social distancing as always. Great to have you back on the program, Ralph. Yeah, I'm glad we're doing that. Uh, That's a good thing for everybody to do right now. And you could take your mask off just for the next few minutes minutes or so while we discuss these important issues. The school budget in New York, uh, the vote uh, last week taking on a decidedly different feel. First of all, it was several weeks later than usual. Secondly, it was all done by mail this year. Um, Ralph, give us your impression of how that vote went. Well, the interesting thing is it actually still isn't over. The uh, governor extended the deadline till tomorrow, yeah. so none of the votes have been uh, counted. We hope it'll uh, work out. It was very different. It was very confusing for people. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out, but at least uh, the governor did approve schools can do a re-vote on July 9th if, uh, you know, if they choose to do that, if their budget does go down. Yeah. So that just adds to the whole drama at this point. Yeah, the dust is a long way from settled on that <laughs> one. We'll see how it goes. But Education Week out with, uh, going to throw some dollars and cents at you here, Ralph. Um, what does it cost to get a public education? Kind of interesting. New York spends about $20,000 per pupil. That's second most in the country. Pennsylvania, 16500 per pupil. And that's uh, 11th on the list. The average, by the way, if you're keeping score at home, is just over 13,000. I got to ask you, Ralph, I think I know the answer to this, but I'll ask it anyway. Is education better if it costs more? Not necessarily. I am really concerned about the fact that the cost of education continues to go up. There are many, many less students uh, in the public school system, but the costs just continue to go up. There are many more teachers than there used to be. There are many more staff members, even though there are less students. However, I have to say that uh, the expectations on schools today have gone from just, uh, you know, teaching, reading, writing, and arithmetic to now they uh, everybody wants a school to uh you know, be the area social worker, to be the health care provider, mm. to provide the food, uh, not only for lunch, but now for breakfast and pack something up for some of the children to eat for dinner. So the expectations are really increasing for what schools will do. Yeah. I think I mentioned a few weeks ago, though, that many parents have said they'll never vote against a school budget again after having <laughs> uh, had their kids home for all these weeks. Yeah, that's true. Uh, every day is National <laughs> Teacher Appreciation day now, right? There you go. <laughs> and then finally, high school sports. It's uh, it's not too soon to be talking about uh, the fall season, even though technically uh, we're not even into summer yet. But uh, Pennsylvania has cleared a number of counties to start practicing. I'm not sure yet where New York stands on that as far as high school sports. Um, how do you think this plague will impact not just the summer leagues, um, but the fall sports schedule as well? Well, I have to admit, I get a chuckle every time I think about about the line on a football team, social distancing, that would take up probably all the way across the field, and the running backs would have a field day. Yeah, with that they would love that, situation. wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's hard to imagine, really, you know, sports like football, soccer, uh, being able to do social distancing and still play. On the other hand, if you're playing golf or tennis, you know, there's more possibility. I think that really that's a good question whether fall sports are, are really going to happen or not. I, I think they will. But uh, there are going to be obviously some changes. I'm not sure that there'll be fans allowed. Concessions won't be available, I don't think. Certainly, the uh, after all that uh, young people have been through during this pandemic, mm. I think that uh, you know they, they need the activity. Yeah. And uh, if schools do the social distancing thing in the classroom and then turn around and say, oh, and by the way, you just got to go home now, there's no sports, uh, that's just going to make it more and more difficult because I think you and I agree that sports is a terrific addition to schools programming and uh, has been the answer for many students 
to be able to be retained in terms of the academic programs because they love the sports so much. So I certainly hope that they will be around in the fall, even if they're different than they used to be. Yeah, I'm rooting for whatever it is. Definitely rooting for a return to sports, a return to normal, really. So many issues, Ralph, that we can't get to all of them, but you've got a wonderful website where folks can go and check you out. What is that, sir, if you would? Thank you, Bob. It's simply whyrun.org. Whyrun.org.